Okay, so we have our list of real users being displayed on the page, which are pulled from Firebase. But when we click on a user, we want to grab our chat with this user and display the messages here. So if we're logged in as Danny and we click on Jim, then if we look at the database, we want to grab the messages from chats and then our user ID and then the other user's user ID. Now currently these user IDs are just set to user ID 1 and user ID 2. So I'm going to replace these with some real user IDs from down here. So I'm going to export this data as JSON. And I'm just going to update it with some real IDs. So I'm going to replace user ID 1 with Danny's user ID, this one. So I'm going to replace it there and there. And I'll replace user ID 2 with Jim's ID. So there and there. I'll save that. And then back on Firebase, click on the menu button again, and I'll import that JSON. So that's in downloads, this one here. Okay, that's updated. So we now have some real chat data and messages data that we can pull and display within our app. So if we're logged in as Danny and we want to grab our chat with Jim, then we need to grab the data at chats and then my user ID and then Jim's user ID. But we don't currently have Jim's user ID when we're on this chat page. So how can we get that? Well, if we jump back to the users page, page users.view, well, we have our user IDs in this key property here. So we could just bind to this to property so that instead of just going to slash chat, we go to slash chat, slash, and then key. So I'll just save that. Now if I click on Jim, we should see slash chats, slash Jim's user ID in the address bar. Yeah, we can see that up here. That's now broken the app because we need to add a root parameter to our roots file. So I'm going to open up the roots file in the router folder. And I'm going to add a root parameter to this chat path here. We can do that by just adding slash and then colon. And then we can add a name that we can use for this user ID. So I'm just going to call it other user ID. Save that. And, and now if I click on Jim, it no longer breaks. And we have Jim's user ID up here. And we can get this root parameter from the dollar root variable. So I'm just going to open up this chat page, page chat.view, and I'm going to add a mounted hook. And we can get access to this root parameter with this dot dollar root dot params dot other user ID, which is the name we specified in our roots file here. So I'm going to log this out. Save that, reload the page, and I'll click on Jim, and we can see Jim's user ID being logged out there. So now that we have the other user's ID, we can trigger an action to get the messages for us. So in this mounted hook, I'm going to trigger an action, which we've not created yet. But I'll call this Firebase Get Messages. I'll pass in the other user's ID. So this dot dollar root dot params dot other user ID. And I'll get rid of this console.log. And we need to map this action. So I'll import map actions from UX and add our map actions function. So we're mapping an action called Firebase get messages. And now we need to create this action. So I'm going to open up the store file, store.js. And I'll create this action down here. Firebase get messages. And we want to pass in the other user ID. 
So let's just log out the other user ID to make sure this action is working so far. Save that. And I'll just click on Jim again. Yeah, we can see other user ID being logged out with Jim's user ID. Okay, so now we want to grab the messages from Firebase within this, this new action. So I'll set up a ref first. So Firebase DB dot ref. And the ref that we want is going to be chats slash our user ID slash Jim's user ID. So this is going to be chats slash our user ID, which we can get from our state. So user ID equals state dot user details dot user ID. And we're also going to have to pass in the state here. And the next part of this ref is going to be slash and then the other user ID, which we're passing in here. And we're going to add a child added hook to this. So dot on child added. And this will return a snapshot. And so we're going to need the message details, so the text and from fields, and also the message ID, this key here. So I'm going to get the details from the snapshot. I'll call that message details. We can get that from snapshot.val. So we need the message ID as well. We can also get that from the snapshot. So let message ID equals snapshot.key. So I'll just log these out for now. I'll log out message ID and I'll log out message details. Save that. Okay, I'll clear the console, click on Jim. Okay, we can see the message ID and the message details being logged out for each message. So now that we have these, we want to trigger a mutation which will add this message to our state. So first of all, we need somewhere to store our messages. So I'll create a new object in the state called messages, which will just be an empty object to begin with. And back to our Firebase get messages action. We want to commit a mutation here. So we're going to need to pass the commit method in here. And we'll commit a new mutation. And I'll call this add message. And we'll pass in a payload with our message ID and our message details. So we need to create this mutation now. So I'll jump to the top and add a new mutation, add message, pass in the state, pass in the payload we're sending from the action. And we can use the view.set method again to write this message to our messages object. So view.set. And we're going to write to state.messages. Um, we're going to write at the key payload.message ID. And the data we're going to write there is at payload.message details. So I'll save that. I'll clear the console, click on Jim. And if we go to our view dev tools, you can see it's firing this add message mutation twice. So I click on the last one, scroll down to our state, open up messages. You can see it's adding our messages to our state. So now let's display these messages on our chat page. So I'm going to open up page chat.view and I'm going to map this state property messages to this page chat component. So I'm going to add map state to this import at the top. Uh, we need to add a computed object. Where we can add our map state method. Mapping from the store and the state property we want to map is messages. So now that we're mapping this messages property from the state, we can get rid of this hard coded messages property here. So I'll delete that and I'll just save that. Okay, and we can now see the messages from our database on our chat page. Pretty good. So when we're logged in as Danny, this first message is from them. So that's from Jim. 
But if I log out, Danny, and log in, Jim, then this first message should be from me. So let's just see if that's working. So I'll log Danny out. And we'll log in as Jim. And click on Danny. Yep, so now that first message is from me. Okay, so I'm going to log Jim out and log back in as me. Now we do have a little problem here. If we click on Jim, we can see our messages with Jim. If I click on back and I click on a user that we've not conversed with yet. So if I click on Lucy, we can still see the messages between Danny and Jim. So why is that happening? Well, that's happening because when we leave the chat page, we're not clearing out this messages property in the state. So when we leave the chat page, we need to clear out this object. And we also need to stop listening for messages at the node that we're currently listening to. So this child added hook where we're listening for messages, we need to turn that off whenever the user leaves this chat page. Okay, so I'm gonna add a new action here called Firebase stop getting messages. And I'm just gonna log out Firebase stop getting messages. And we wanna trigger this action whenever the user leaves this chat page. So we can do that using the destroyed hook. So I'm gonna to jump to the chat page, page chat.view, and add a new hook, destroyed. So this will be fired when the user leaves this page. So at this point, we wanna trigger that action that we just created. So this dot firebase, stop getting messages. And we need to map this action. So I'll add that to our map actions array here. So firebase, stop getting messages. Okay, so let's just make sure that that action is being fired when we leave this chat page. So I'm just going to reload the app. Click on Jim and click back. Yep, we can see that the Firebase Stop Getting Messages action is being triggered. So let's jump back to the store file. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is turn off this child added hook on this particular ref. Now, in order to do this, we need to place this ref in a variable. And because these actions are two separate functions, we need to make the variable that we use to store this ref global. So I'm going to jump to the top of the file. And I'm just going to set up a variable called messages ref. And now if I jump back down to the Firebase get messages action, I'm going to stick this ref inside that variable. So I'm going to do messages ref equals and then our ref. And then I'll replace our ref here with messages ref. And now down in this Firebase stop getting messages action, to turn off this child added hook on this messages ref, we can just do messages ref dot off child added. And before we fire that, I'm just going to make sure there is something inside messages ref before we do that, just to avoid any errors. So I'll just add if messages ref, then we'll fire this off method to turn off this listener. And we also need to clear out the messages object up here, set it back to an empty object. So we'll trigger a mutation. So to do that, we need to pass in the commit method. So we'll commit a mutation called clear messages. And we need to create this mutation. So I'll create that here, clear messages, pass in the state. And in this, we'll just set messages back to an empty string. So we can just do state.messages equals empty string. Okay, let's save that. Okay, so if I click on Jim, we see the messages between me and Jim. If I click back, click on Lucy, who is someone we've not chatted with yet. We no longer see those messages from Danny and Jim. Okay, so we're now grabbing our messages from the database and displaying them on our chat page. In the next video, we're gonna update these messages and display our real usernames on them. We're also gonna make sure this offline banner only appears if the other user is offline. 
and we're going to display the name of the person we're chatting to in the title bar as well. Make sure you click my head to subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment. If you want to grab the source code for this app, go to dannys.link slash smackchatcode. And if you want to learn all of the basics of Quasar Framework, Vue.js, Vuex and Firebase, then check out my full course at dannys.link slash quasar.